Okay, everypone, stuff's starting to get down to the wire. This Q&A session has taken up the entire last week of my life, and it started to occur to me that I don't really want it to take up another entire week of my life. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit here by myself, and I'm going to churn through this entire thing in one sitting. I've got on my custom-made Digibrony shirt. And by custom, I mean poorly made Digibrony shirt. I will not have Victor with me for all of this. He might pop in here and there, but uh, I figured I could get it faster done without him. And our schedules have not been aligning well. He's been losing sleep, and now he's just uh, been asleep all day. So I'm going to leave him to his own devices, and we're going to try to get through this entire thing. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to upload these one after another, like every six hours over the course of the weekend. And then I'm legitimately going to take the weekend off from making videos and do something like play Terra online, eat a lot of chicken nuggets, and get really drunk. So I'll have fun. Anyway, <clears throat> without further ado, let's get started. My first question is from Doodle Nugget. He asks, what are you looking for in something like a fan comic? Well, I'm not really looking for anything specific. I'm just, I just like what I find out of fan comics. I read a hell of a lot of them. Uh, the real answer is great art. If it's got great art, it doesn't really matter what it's about. I'll probably have a look at it. Zentomi asks, I would like to ask you why you think Fluttershy's character is heavily popular in the Brony fandom as a whole. Because she's goddamn adorable. I mean, come on. Welsh Pony asks, you've talked about headcanons that you believe in. Is there any popular headcanons in the fandom that you really hate? Uh, I wouldn't say that I hate any of them. I just think a lot of them are kind of senseless, where it's just like weird stuff that the show has only vaguely given the idea of, and I don't really care about it. So it's not that I don't, it's not that I actively dislike them. I just don't care when I see them. Um, one character who has a, a hell of a lot of headcanon around them is Scootaloo, and I just don't find Scootaloo that interesting or entertaining, so a lot of her headcanon stuff, I'm just like, uh, enough about Scootaloo. Anonymous Brony asks, Why do you feel that so many people freaked out about the whole Alicorn thing in the first place? I've never understood that, how one change affects so many people like that. It kind of reminds me of the whole Derpy situation back in Season 2. Well, this is a great question. The thing about the whole Twilicorn thing is that I think it's sort of a mass hysteria, and I think it stems largely from the fact that when people get really into something, they start to get really afraid about it. They're afraid they could lose it or that it could change and that it won't be <clears throat> the same thing that they liked, that they uh, that they were so into. And I think if there's one thing that the, the fandom fears more than anything else, it's Hasbro because of the fact that they're kind of the guys at the top. We don't know who they are. We don't know the names of anyone at Hasbro like we do the staff that actually makes the show. Uh, you know, we don't know what their intentions are, how they feel about bronies, because they've never really made any of this stuff clear. Um, and after the whole Derpy fiasco, which I personally had no issue with it, but a lot of people did. A lot of people really cared about Derpy, and when they took her out of the show and changed her voice and everything, it was a big deal. And so it gave people the impression that Hasbro was going to change things and potentially damage their view of the show. And... When you have stuff like Lauren Faust leaving, people start to get afraid. Uh, it, you know, I, I've often felt that if Lauren Faust did not leave the show before Season 3 came out, it, or if we didn't know she left the show, even if she had left but nobody knew, there probably would not have been nearly as many people who thought that Season 3 was significantly different or that it was going downhill. I think a lot of that comes from people just, they, they knew she was gone, so they were looking for things to be different. They were, they were expecting things to change, that they would not go with her vision anymore. Or if Faust had said something like, I did intend for Twilight to become an alicorn or a princess, then I think a lot of less people would be freaking out about it. Faust has said now that she, intend, she intended for Twilight to secede Celestia. She didn't say that she necessarily intended for her to become a princess, or an alicorn, and maybe she didn't, but ultimately things are not moving in such a ma massively different direction from where Faust intended for them to go, but people are afraid that it'll happen. People are afraid, and something like this, it was so easy to blame Hasbro for it. It's so easy to say they changed a character because they wanted to sell this toy, because there was this insanely expensive toy that they were making, you know, to go with it. Um, but there's been a lot of changes like this. It, it bothered people before, not nearly on the same scale, but it did bother a lot of people that uh, Princess Cadence was an alicorn too. Uh, 
<coughs> which was a Hasbro decision. Apparently, Lauren Faust had no idea that that was going to be the case when uh, when they were making the episode, uh, when she was still on the team. So, yeah, Hasbro does make a lot of decisions throughout the show, but these decisions don't have that... Why does it... It's not that big a deal that Twilight's an alicorn, you know? It's not a major... It's, it's almost completely a physical change for her character. The fact that she was going to become a princess was supposed to happen anyway. Um, so, yeah... Hasbro did tack wings onto her to sell a toy, but why? I don't. It doesn't matter to me, and I think it mostly matters to people out of fear. The idea that Hasbro is going to change something, that they're going to take away this thing that the fandom feels that they've worked so hard in their love for. So uh, yeah, it's mostly fear based. And anyway, moving along. Next question: Gummy fourteen o four asks, "What is your favorite non pony?" Surprise! This took so long to came, come up. Um, obviously, because, you know, Discord's really cool and all, and I like him, I won't say as much as the next guy, because some people really love Discord. I'm actually going to go with Chrysalis, because she didn't get to do much in the show, but she was such a, I don't know, I just like her personality and everything. She has a lot of charm. I like the fan art of Chrysalis and stuff. Um, it's odd, because I don't really have any headcanons, and I haven't read a whole lot of headcanons, but when I see her, um, it, I'm probably biased because of the fact that I have her as my wallpaper right now, and it's this really awesome wallpaper, and so I've been seeing her a lot. Uh, yeah, and also in the comics, she's really fun, so I'm going with Chrysalis. Next question... Another person, uh, Ernst Gummy, 1404 still, but asking, will you marry me? So, okay, I've gotten a lot of marriage proposals at this point. I'm going to need you all to form a line, and I'll um, go through and maybe choose which one of you I want to marry. Artist Strike asks, what are your thoughts on Spike as a character? Uh, I think I pretty much summed up my thoughts on Spike at the beginning of s my Spike at Your Service video, where I basically said that he's a good support character, and I'm fine with him being in the show, but as soon as it's about him, I just don't care. <clears throat> Anonymous asks if you could make another uh, if you could make any other two ponies into alicorns who would it be one from the main six and one from the public from the main six I would pick Pinkie Pie just to wreck utter havoc on everything and from the public apparently I would pick Vinyl Scratch because I wanted to see how it would affect their her relationship with Octavia in university days because that would be fun Skloosh asks favorite MLP quote uh, off the top of my head I'm gonna have to go with I sure do look funny when Applejack sees her reflection in the um, in the trophy in, in uh, Applebuck season. True or false, Pinkie Pie is best... No. True or false, Gypsy Pie is best pony. Ayo, true. Anonymous asks, how long do you plan on continuing to make Digibrony videos? Because if you can keep up the same quality, I could watch them forever. I'm going to keep making them until they run their course, which is probably going to happen eventually. Um, you know, obviously if they keep making new episodes and those episodes keep being interesting and I keep having things to say about them, I'm going to keep covering the new episodes. I definitely am going to cover every episode of the show that exists already, and then I'm probably going to go back and do second videos on a lot of them if I find more to say, and then I'm going to cover all of the broad general concepts I can think of. Probably talk about a lot of fan works. Hopefully get more involved in the... Fucking what? Okay, even though I was pretty sure I had deleted everything off the card, the memory got full anyway. I was in the middle of explaining how long I'd do this um, video series. So I'll say just um, based on everything I was just saying, continuing on that, I'll probably do this for another up to two years, depending on how long I go, how uh, motivated I stay. Uh, whether or not I am actually able to make some money off of it, because if I can't, I probably will have to do something else in the meantime, which would make my videos slow down, but, uh, but I won't just stop making them regardless. John T. asks, who does your title cards? That would be Jowie Bean. You can find a link to his, uh, DeviantArt in the description, and also in the descriptions of all the videos that I use his pictures in. Do you think the episodes are being shown in chronological order? I think that after season one, there's a reliable chronolo chron chronology between the episodes. Um, season one's is obviously questionable because of the fact of the way the seasons happen and the weirdness about the the Grand Gallop and Gala trilogy being split so far across the series when it doesn't it seemed to be like pretty close by in the episode three. So it's questionable there. But other than that, I think they tried to make it more. I think they've tried to make it uh, chronological just because it makes more sense that way, and they're trying to do bigger things with the plot. 
Nathan asks, would you play a pony-oriented game that was Warhammer-type tabletop game with custom-made models? Yeah, that sounds cool as shit, and probably would be a good way to get me into tabletop figurine games, which I haven't played any of before. Uh, the Archivist asks, One, have you, heard the t have you heard of the Double Rainboom, and if so, what are your thoughts? Uh, somehow I had never heard of Double Rainboom until about three weeks ago. I don't, like, when they put out the, or some, around when they put out the trailer with the release date is when I found out about it, so now I'm really looking forward to it, and, uh, yeah, a lot of people have asked if I'm gonna do an analysis on it, and that answer is if I have something to say. Emily asks, what advice would you give to a YouTube noob who sucks at making videos? Um, practice a lot, buy decent equipment, and worry a lot about your presentation. Um, to me, presentation is extremely important. Uh, I'm not going to watch a video if... Because a, a lot of people have sent me response videos and stuff. And some of them, there'll be like a really loud hum in the background from their computer or something. Or their microphone is really bad. And I can't make it through a 10 minute video like that. Because ultimately... What you need to do is sit down and ask yourself, why is this in video form? Is the video form adding anything to this? If no, put it in writing, because it doesn't need to be a video. If I would have an easier time reading it and I'd understand all your points, whereas if you put it in a video and it's just really grating and hard to listen to, then I'm going to say, why didn't you just write this down, you know? The reason that I'm able to do videos is because... I have good equipment, I have, uh, I, I try to make it visually appealing, you know, I think that the visuals do add something because I'm showing clips from the show that are important to what I'm saying. Uh, yeah, so, you know, have purpose and do it well. Anyway, oh, and edit, because if you don't edit it, then that's just lazy. The Brony from Denmark asks, if you could make a character that would appear in the show, how would you like it to be, what would it look like, and what is, would its cutie mark be? Well, I'm extremely unimaginative, so I can't really say. Um, I'd probably put Digibrony in there, or some sort of similarly existential-minded, uh, made-a-fictional character who could sit around. Anonymous asks, how long do you think the Crystal Empire has been around? Do the Wendigos have anything to do with Sombra? I have no idea about either of those. Edge Whisper asks, what is your opinion of the Changelings? I think they're a pretty cool idea, and I'm glad the comic brought them back, because it's made a lot of good use for them. Um, they're, they're, they're kind of like a big concept for a character to just be in one episode, you know? So the comics have already done a lot to expand on their culture and, like, show who they are and what, they, what they're really about, so... Yeah, I think they're pretty cool. Uh, Spite asks, Digibrony, if a dragon could get to the Crystal Empire, do you think it will eat every crystal building and object there? Also, are you a changeling? The dragon thing sounds pretty possible, and no, I'm not a changeling. Uh, Anonymous says, do you like pony swag? Yes. As a matter of fact, I actually wrote and test recorded my own pony swag verse, or several verses. I wrote like a six-minute pony swag uh, last year, which was, uh, in retrospect, it's not very good. Uh, some of the verses are okay. It starts off like, uh, Ponies, bronies, who'd have thought you find me rhyming about what? When I was young, I thought was such a thing which I would never touch. I grew up, came to love a lot of things I thought would suck. Soon as I knew ponies were the shit, I watched it, now I'm stuck. I got pony theoretical analysis, running from my fingertips. Thought I'd write a whole thesis. Pretty soon I know I'll write a break a pony hit. Kind of pony, every bony should know, will no promise it. Kind of sad I wasn't around for the pony swag. Mega wicks, gotta admit, fix it and do my own track. Leave it up to you whether I know how to rap. All I know is that I got the passion keeping my back. In about a minute, gonna break down all my pony love. Tell you all about the shit that keeps me watching, keeps me up all night. Every damn Friday, I can't sleep till I get my pony fix, will never make me. That's the first verse of mine. Uh, it also had a, a verse from Big Mac and stuff. Anyway, Mega Guy Thirty One asks, "Can I animate your OC? Be my guest. That would be great." Too many pieces asks, "While it would never happen, which pony would you be least angry about if they weren't in season four at all? It has to be one of the main six. I'd be angry. It doesn't matter who it is. I'll be angry if one of them's not in the in the in the main. If the if they if they don't put Spike in the whole season, though, I'll be cool with that." Watermelon Overlord asks, why do you sound significantly younger than you look? Well, I'm sure that you probably thought that when I had the massive beard. Now that that's gone, I, I think I look a lot younger. Someone at my work, when I shaved my face, said, I want to go on the Conrad diet, which is shave your face and 15 years off of your life. But as in 15 years off of your appearance, not literally off your life. And okay. 
what pony or combination of ponies do you resonate with the most? Um, I think I resonate most with Pinkie Pie, especially in A Friend Indeed. Um, I'm gonna go close that door that keeps creaking. Anyways, I take like a really, I have, a, I have an extremely positive attitude, uh, and I, I like to make people smile and make them happy, and I hope that's really reflected in my videos. And I'm also pretty damn eccentric, so I, I feel a lot like Pinky uh, of my group of friends. I also have a penchant for non sequitur. What are some of the so many ways they can go with this that you were talking about in relation to Twilight's being an alicorn? Well, let's read what I came up with while I was doing this. This is off the top of my head. I said they could go the classic route wherein Twilight has to deal with the tough consequences of being a princess. They could go the route where Twilight totally owns as a princess and also keeps having adventures. They could go the route where Twilight's friends become her royal court and protect the world as knights of the round. Fucking awesome idea. Twilight could be trained to fly by her friends. Twilight could join Celestia and Luna in some kind of epic princess shit. All kinds of stuff can happen. This is just at the top of my head, apparently at 10 a.m. after typing 42,000 words in a row. Nord nerd, ugh, Nerdwegian asks, any favorite pieces of heartwarming, tear-jerking, funny, or otherwise awesome fan art you'd like to share? Well, I've seen so much fan art that I don't keep good track of it, but if you go to my DeviantArt page or my Reddit page, then either go to like my Pictures I've liked, pictures I've favorited, and, you know, just look through there, and all of those are crowning moments of something, even if it's just beautifulness of art. Miguel C. asks, do you think they'll make an episode committed to exploring Saddle Arabia? That would be cool, uh, especially because we know it's a place, and, you know, we've seen a sort of desert, but I would like to see, like, a real-ass desert with maybe um, Arabian-influenced designs of uh, buildings and stuff would be really cool. They, uh, even, I'm sure... Uh, what's his name? The guy who does the background music. Not Daniel Ingram, but... Uh, Wes Anderson? Is that him? I'm sure he'd have fun making, like, a Arabian-themed soundtrack for the episode. Anyway. Is is a username. Asked an extremely long question about the mental state of Pinkie Pie that I cut for time. Back around the time that A Friend Indeed aired, I actually made a metafictional fanfiction about Pinkie Pie in which she explains her mental state to uh, the audience. So I'll link that in the description. Uh, I recently shared that with Berkeley and Lion and he said it was pretty cool. So maybe it's pretty cool. Go ahead and read that. Jake Hughes asks, what do you really wish the show would explore, but most likely never will due to the medium as a kid's show? Uh, and I'm going to try to be real about this, because my answer in here is cosmic horror, and I'm like, come on, MLP doesn't need to explore cosmic horror. I guess it would be um, relationships, but in the, because, you know, a kid's show could explore a relationship. It just wouldn't be very interesting. Uh, you know, to me, just romance without being adult is not interesting at all. Uh, that's why University Days is so good, because it's, you know, it, it's extremely realistic. It has everything that you would expect out of a relationship um, comes up in that. And does it with a total My Little Pony attitude, where it's all, like, super sunshine and rainbows, even though it's also dealing with adult concepts. So, I don't know, anything like that, alcoholism, any adult concept you could think of would be, you know would be nice, but we're obviously not going to get it. Orion Delta asks, What do you think of the griffin statues outside the library in the Crystal Empire? What purpose do you think they serve? I never noticed them. I still have not gone back to look for them, but that sounds interesting. Who was your 8,000th sub? I wish I knew, but unfortunately, YouTube, if you <laughs> click on the subscribers list, it gives you about 30 to a page, and they are in no order whatsoever. And I've got something like 200 pages of subscribers. Probably more. I don't know. I'm bad at math. Probably be more than that, wouldn't it? Fuck loads of subs, and I have no way of going through them in any order. Like, I'll go in, and they'll be just completely mixed up. They're not chronological in either direction, and there's no way of organizing them. So YouTube's way of looking at your subscribers is a fucking nightmare, which sucks because I, early on, I did try to keep track of who was subbed to me. Anytime somebody subscribed who had, like, over a hundred subs, I'd, like, look at them and see what they're all about and stuff, but I can't do that anymore because it's just too out of hand. If Gilda made a return in Season 4, do you think she would be redeemed uh, in the same way as Discord, Trixie, Babs, etc.? Uh, I'd love to see Gilda come back and be reformed. I think I've mentioned this already, but I really... 
would love it if they tackled her as like her th- her weakness is that she's inauthentic and bitchy and they really tried to reform her uh yeah it'd be even cooler if she kind of wanted to be reformed like maybe she went back home and she had no friends because everyone kind of realized she's a bitch because so far it's all been sort of reformed by force so it'd be interesting if we saw gilda actually come back like asking how she can become a better person and then just having a lot of trouble actually doing it uh somebody asks who are your top 10 ponies not just number one so okay Applejack, Twilight Sparkle, Pinkie Pie, Rarity, Rainbow Dash, Fluttershy, Trixie, Sweetie Belle, Apple Bloom, and let's go with Fancy Pants, because he's the man. Orkin asks, There's a, certainly a lot of passion from a huge audience for this show, but as a newfound brony, I'm wondering, is there such a thing as too far? If so, where do you think that line is? Uh, I don't think there's such a thing as too far, unless we, like, went to war. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I, I like going as far as possible. My first thought when realizing that Twilight will probably replace Celestia is that Celestia might die soon. She and Luna are 1,000 plus years old and looking pretty good too, but you'd think that their time is almost up. My instincts tell me that Celestia simply wouldn't go off somewhere and retire. Do you think MLP will ever do such a thing, and do you think that they could and or should? I can't really see them actually having Celestia die, just because it's a kid's show, and I think that would be some seriously heavy shit. Uh, I won't deny the possibility if they did it in, like, a really classy, pixar way, but I don't see it coming. Um, but having her retire would pr- is pretty likely, actually, since she's supposed to be seceded by Twilight. Uh, if you could dedicate an entire episode to tell the complete life story of a single character, who would it be? I would pick either Pinkie Pie or Applejack. In AJ's case, I think that would get into some really heavy shit because of her old dead parent situation. But in Pinky's case, I think it would just solve a lot of mysteries. I really just want to know, like, I want to know literally the chronological story of her life. So uh, that would be nice. Um, I Hate Waiting asks, if you could remake any episode, which you, and by the way, I Hate Waiting stayed very true to their name and started bugging me on YouTube about not getting to their questions. Well, now I've gotten to your question. Anyway, I Hate Waiting asks, if you could remake any episode, which one would you remake and what would be the plot? I would remake Ghostbusters, and I'd make it thematically make sense. I would make it so the lesson was that Trix... The idea of my Ghostbusters, first of all, Trixie would have done something to actually warrant making people pissed off, not just putting on a show. Um, she, The point of the episode would be that her magic is not the same as Twilight's, and that the two of them competing was meaningless, because she's actually just a show magician, and Twilight is a is a like a magician whose powers are all-encompassing so that would be the lesson that would be to not try to compare unlike things to one another i guess next question did you ever expect to be successful on youtube i expected i expected to eventually achieve success not through my little pony i was expecting that i was going to start doing video game analysis which i still plan to do at some point uh that's the reason i bought this stuff because I wanted to make uh, video game analysis videos and uh, yeah the the MLP videos you know I thought maybe they could be popular because I was like well I'm talking about the show in a way that nobody's doing it but I didn't know if there was an audience for that Uh, and it turns out there's quite an audience for that Kevin T asks do you like ska not in particular but do you know Jesse Carlson aka J Carlson 04 okay I do like some ska I like that's ska. By the way, that's a for those who don't know, J. Carlson 04 does ska remixes of um, Friendship is Witchcraft songs, and they're really good. Uh, have you checked out Jan Animation's Ask the Crusaders Tumblr yet, and what did you think? I have not actually seen the Tumblr. I did watch the Vocational Death Cruise animation, and I am subscribed to Jan Animations on YouTube, but I have not read the Tumblr yet. Um... If you had to pick between giving up anime or giving up ponies, which do you choose? I would not choose either one. You can't tell me that I can't do it, because I just did it. Uh, Did you also enjoy watching watching Josh Scorcher's change from non-brony to reluctant admirer of the show in a full-blown way? I have no idea who Josh Scorcher is. Uh, So, yeah, maybe you could link me or something. Who would win in a fight? Both members of Acoustic Brony and Mando Pony versus Dusty Cat and Saber Spark. Well, I don't know what Acoustic Brony looks like. And, uh, but Mando Pony don't seem like he could, I mean, Dusty Cat and Saber Spark, they got some weight to throw around. I'm not trying to say they're fat, but I'm just saying they got some weight to throw around. They could probably slam someone. I wouldn't win in a fight against either one of them individually. 
but I'm only 5'8". Do you watch Fokun's videos? What is your favorite of her series? Uh, I clicked on it, it looked like a Let's Play channel, and I'm not really interested in that, so no. Do you like Kuroshi, ya, yeah, or does he rub you the wrong way? I don't- I don't know who that is! Ah! What is the hardest part about putting together your videos? Um, by far the hardest part is when I have to cut up the actual episode of the show and organize it along with the- with what I'm saying. It's just kind of tedious and it can be a pain because I'll lose- I'll be like sitting there trying to keep track of all the different parts, finding everything I need. Um, it's not that bad, but it is- if if there's a if there's a point where I'm making a video and then I stop and go dick around, that's the point where I do that. How do you feel about the pony meat found in burgers? I don't. I didn't even. Uh, have you played Pokemon or no? Have you played Ponymon yet? And what did you think? Um, I tried to play it about a year ago. It seemed like it was a little buggy at the time. I think they had said that they weren't done with it or they were they were in a, like an early stage. Um, I was having fun. I love the every the, the fact that it's ponies and Pokemon and everything, but like it's fire red, and I had to walk so fucking slow at the start of the game, and I was just like, oh, oh, I need the running shoes. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, I, I think I was having trouble figuring out how the save states worked or something, and I I only played through like an hour, but it seemed like fun, and I definitely want to play it. It's and if I ever decide, hey, I really need to replay the first Pokemon game, I'll probably just play Ponymon instead. Would anything make you leave the fandom? No. Maybe if I became extremely disinterested five years from now. No, probably not even. Let's say ten years from now, if I've completely lost interest in MLP, maybe then I'll be like, you know what? I'm not sure I can call myself a part of that fandom anymore. <laughs> but no, I'll be a part of this fandom as long as it's hard to still beating. Uh, do you hate me for asking so many questions? Right now, pro- uh, Right now, no, but at the time I was writing this, I did, because I was extremely fucking tired. Uh, when have you failed? Describe what happened and what you learned from it. Letter to Celestia style. Dear Princess Celestia, I learned that if you shit around in, cl in class all year, you'll fail classes. Nah, Joshin, I knew that already. Mostly, I learned that I'm a shitty person, your student, Digibrony, circa age 17. That was about my Algebra 2 class. Uh, and then apparently I cut out like a shitload of Kevin T's questions because he asked me like a hundred questions and a lot of them I just didn't have an answer for and I was really mad and tired so I stopped answering his questions. Uh, I think that was where I stopped when I, when I wrote 32,000 words in a day, that was where I officially stopped writing because I got tired of it. <laughs> Referestka asks, why do you think there are four princesses? What could be the purpose of having four rulers? Well, it's hard to say because we don't really know what their royal duties are. However, I like to imagine that princesses are kind of like Batman. So it's like having four Batmans. Anonymous asks, what would your opinion be on seeing physically disabled ponies within the show, or at least in the, f uh, the fandom too? A wheelchair... As a wheelchair and orthotic user myself, I think it would be nice to see one in the show. Uh, from what I understand, Lauren Faust actually intended for Scootaloo to be disabled as a flyer and that she was not going to be capable of flying. Um, whether or not the show intends to keep it this way remains to be seen. We still don't know. Um, it would be nice to have her as a disabled character. Because, you know, too often if there's a disabled character, then their, their whole personality is being disabled. So it would be nice to have a character like Scootaloo who is a fully fleshed out character and just happens to be disabled. That's the kind of way I'd like to see that handled in the show if it was handled at all. Kimmy B asked a long question about the origin of Apple Bloom given, uh, given her lack of appearance in the Creedy Mark Chronicles. I don't have a headcanon about it, but it is a strange moment that she was not there. My best guess is that she's all she's just a baby and her parents are already dead and she's asleep somewhere, so I don't know. Um, I think it's possible that Applejack's desire to leave Ponyville was maybe fueled by the death of her parents. That would be some pretty good fanfic material. Which you have my permission to use. Another long question about whether Equestria is a planet or a country. Well, Equestria is a country, which you, if you look at the official map, just Google a map of Equestria and you'll get it. Um, it's not a full continent, though, because it, it cuts, like, the map cuts off at the bottom of Equestria and there's still land, and it says here be dragons down below. So I think that it's actually, um, I think it's a country as part of a continent, which would be interesting to see explored. Uh, XXS 
XXX Ultimus XXX asks, if you could go back and reanalyze any episode of any season of MLP, what would it be? Well, I intend to go back and analyze. Oh, reanalyze. Well, okay. The thing is that I don't consider an analysis to ever be done. Um, I know a lot of you haven't seen my Ghostbusters video, but I actually clarify this at the start of that video, which is kind of hilarious because now I'm going to do another Ghostbusters video. So, uh, great timing there. But yeah, I don't consider any of it to be absolutely finished. There's some episodes that I'm probably not going to have to come back to, like Apple Buck Season and Winter Wrap-Up. I pretty much said everything I had to say about those episodes. But stuff like Ghostbusters and Magical Mystery Cure, which I've already said I'm going to do more videos on, uh, you know, keep keep me coming back as I come up with more ideas. Persona asks, if MLP was to do a parody of another show, movie, or something else from pop culture, what would you want it to be? And I wrote, I want to see MLP do the picture of Dorian Gray with fancy pants corrupting Pinkie Pie. I have great taste. And the camera is running out of batteries. Okay, we are back. Um, next question. Out of the supposed 26 episodes in Season 4, how many would you want to see dedicated to Twilight mastering her new powers of flight? Uh, just one. We don't need a whole lot of it. You know, get it over with. We gotta leave room for all those rarity episodes. Would you want to see any of the characters develop personal relationships with other ponies, tackling the whole boyfriend-slash-girlfriend issue in Season 4 or any season after that? Um, I'm pretty fine with them not ever having personal relationships. Um, I think, you know... I want to imagine that they're all going to have healthy relationships in their lives, but they can worry about that shit later. I'm not watching this show for the romance. Um, especially because it's going to be kids' show romance, and that's fucking lame. Do you like bananas? I'm a bitch who likes bananas. <coughs> that was a... That was a reference, by the way, if anybody doesn't get that one. Uh, do you think the writers should adapt a MLP fanfiction into a fully-fledged episode like Adventure Time did? And if so, which fanfiction would you want to see as an episode? Um, I'd rather not, because I can't see it happening since the writers don't read any fanfiction, so... Yeah. Uh, what would you... Well, would you want to see Derpy come back? More importantly, should Derpy come back, even just as a silent comedic character? Um, uh, I don't care. Um, you know, I like Derpy, but I just don't think she's that big of a deal. So, um, it's always fun, but whatever. Do you think it's possible and would you want to see an episode involving elements of disharmony or perhaps six new ponies wielding the elements like some kind of the fan favorites? Uh, I think that would be kind of cheap and obvious. We already had Discord who was the spirit of disharmony, so we don't need to have more disharmony. <laughs> Uh, Fluttershy as a dragon, yay or nay? Nay. Uh, what is your opinion on the recently cancelled MLP Fighting is Magic game? Um, I was really sad about it because I love, you know, good, tight 2D fighters. Like, the game was obviously inspired by games by, like, uh, Arc System Works, which are the people who make Guilty Gear and Blazblue, and I loved those games. I uh, recently was a big fan of Skullgirls. Uh, the project is continuing, though. It's got Lauren Faust doing new designs for it. So it's not going to be MLP-related anymore, but it should still be pretty awesome. And uh, I'll still be excited for it, because those guys really seemed like they were new... new what they, they really seemed like they knew what they were doing making a fighting game. And if, if it really does... Um, if the character designs are similar enough to ponies to where people could make a pony mod for it, that would be awesome. Uh, anyway... Could it be possible for a small-time fan-made show, whether it be based on someone else's IP or not, to make it to television? And if so, what would they have to do in order to get it broadcast? Well, if it's based on intellectual property content, then no, it's not going to go anywhere, because obviously it's going to get shut down, uh, unless they had permission to do it from the network, at which point it's not... I don't know, I guess it would still be a fan work, but at that point it's official fan work, and if it's not based on someone else's IP, then it's not a fan work either, it's just original content. Uh, Jay Fluffy asks, can you see the creative team of Friendship is Magic using Twilight as a vessel to tell us more about the Princess Alicorn Master Race? Yeah, that's probably what's going to happen at the start of Season 4, is that they're going to explain more about that. British Bronies asks, what trait from a character do you wish would be fleshed out more for the purpose of being able to analyze that trait to come to a conclusion on psychological patterns within the individual, such as Twilight's anxiety problems? Um... I'd like to see more about Pinkie Pie. I mean, I don't expect the show to get into this, but I would like to know more about exactly how Pinkie Pie thinks, whether she's really dealing with uh, 
with something like depression or anxiety that underlies her um, her personality. That would all be interesting. I've kind of explored it myself already in the aforementioned fanfic, but yeah. Uh, Dude asks, If you could decide upon one aspect of the world of Friendship is Magic that would become reality, what would it be? Creatures, social structures, rules of physics, etc. Also, why would it be that, and how do you think it would change the way we currently live? Um, I would probably copy their societal structure, which would completely reshape our entire everything uh, into the point where it's not even our reality anymore. It's just a new reality that I've suddenly created. But um, as I described in my Pony Ages video, I think it's really great if children could all be given space to realize their potential and then find a niche that they could serve for the rest of their lives, you know. Um, yeah, I think that'd be great. I think everyone should be able to find a niche somewhere. Something that they can enjoy. Um, it's probably difficult in our world because we have so many damn people that, uh, you know, we need a lot of people to do something like work a factory job, which I don't think everyone who works at something like that enjoys. But I do think that some people actually are living happily while doing jobs like that. So I just want everyone to be happy with whatever they're doing in their life. That would be great. Um, you stated before that you believe in the concept of destiny. Does that imply free will doesn't exist or is inconsequential? Yes, I do not believe in the idea of free will. I think that the idea is mostly wishful thinking on the part of people who want to believe in accountability, um, which is understandable. And I can't think of any good reason that free will has to exist, you know? Um, obviously there's no way to say whether it does or not, but... I, I can't think of any reason. There's nothing that makes me go, oh, logically, free will has to exist. It's like, no, nothing, nothing, nothing suggests that. Uh, anyway, do you think there is an implicit correlation between being a princess and being an alicorn? Probably at this point, considering all the princesses have been alicorns and vice versa. What are your thoughts on the format of the show? Do you think the show should have multi-part episodes for more than just the beginning and end of a given season? Uh, it would be nice if the show just went with whatever's appropriate. So far, it seems like they're doing the two-parters as opening and endings because of the fact that it's it's a way for them to make it a big deal. You know, they can do this big, cool story arc, and it's like, okay, we're opening up the season or closing the season with flair and, you know, draw a lot of attention. The hub can do some kind of extended advertising because uh, doing a two-part episode uh, in one... Because they always so far, they've always done it in one day where it's just like both episodes broadcast at the same time. So obviously that takes away a week where they can have a new episode, and they're going to want to make it a big deal whenever they do that. If they decided to do two-parters that were spread across a week, that would be nice, but the reason they're not going to try to do that too much is because of the fact that they want to have the pick-up-and-watch um, ability for the show, where, you know, whatever episode comes on, you can still understand what's happening, because reruns are extremely important to kids' shows, and they that's why they are... Um, especially when they go into syndication, which is, MLP might be about to do, so... Uh, yeah. Um, it's not likely, but it would be nice, because in cases like Keep Calm and Flutter On, where they easily could have made two episodes of the concept, it would be nice if they really made everything fit with the, uh, with the amount of episodes that it necessitates. I should stop shaking so much. What are your impressions of Hasbro's impressions of bronies? Do you think Hasbro will capitalize on the market of adult fans with disposable income interested in their IP, or do you rather think it will disregard the market as not viable enough in the long run? Uh, yeah, the handling of bronies has been weird so far because of the fact that they haven't, uh, capitalized on it. I really discussed this already in the last video, where I said that, you know, A, I think Hasbro thinks if we like it, then we're gonna like it to stay the same. If it stays the same, we're still gonna like it, is what they're thinking. And with, with capitalizing on it, they've mostly just been getting other companies to do it for them, where they say, like, oh, hey, we love fine, you can put out as many shirts as you want, and, you know, and I think that's probably doing pretty well, um... Yeah, so for the time being, I think we'll continue to see, like, a slow trickle of stuff that actually is made for us. Um, hey there, everyone asks, what episode got you hooked on MLP? The first episode where I realized that I was watching something good was Apple Buck season. Because, like, the first three episodes, I was like, yeah, this is fine and all, but uh, I, I basically considered it a high-quality cartoon, but I've seen a number of those. It was when I saw Apple Buck season, I was like, this is actually something special. This is actually cooler than the average cartoon. But it wasn't until Return of Harmony when it was like shit got real, you know, where it's like, 
it it was such a badass opening way to start a season and it just gave me this impression like wow they're about to really realize the potential aren't they and then they totally did because like the next few episodes are also amazing that goes right into lesson zero which is one of my favorites and lunar eclipse which is one of my favorites and sister who's social which is one of my favorites and i was like that's when it was like "Ooh, this is good now i'm gonna watch this all and i finished it in like a day so anyway Anonymous asks, in your season 3 overview, you said you you thought Look Before You Sleep was a good episode. How? Twilight is out of character in that episode, and Applejack and Rarity act incredibly immature, and there's nothing but fighting all the way through. Well, you know, we all act immature, and we're all petty assholes from time to time. Or at least I think... <laughs> I'm not going to put words in your mouth, but I'm a petty asshole a lot of the time. Uh, me and Victor get into fights just like Applejack and Rarity's all the time. And, uh... I don't really think Twilight was out of character. I think there's actually a bit of a misdirection in the episode where they try to make Twilight seem like she's completely ignorant, but then in the scene where they're going to bed, she actually c turns around and is like, you know, uh, you guys have been arguing all night and ruining my sleepovers, which suggests that she did know all along that they were that they were doing this, but she was trying to not think about it because she wanted the night to go well. So, yeah, um, I guess I just wrote... A significant portion of my analysis of the episode which is I've been meaning to do that episode for quite a while because that was when, when I was doing the text version of these analysis I stopped right before that episode but uh I will do it relatively soon spiral eyed maniac asks do you follow CR and if you do what are your feelings on his hostility towards the show and the fan base as of late um I've never followed CR I do remember watching his uh, overview of all the seasons um from like whenever and, you know, I wish I could help him, but I love S3, so show him my videos if you want. If you like CR and you're thinking this guy needs to realize something about why the show is good, go ahead and send videos my way. His way. Whatever. Australian Fries asks, what do you think of the population of Equestria? Or, no, what do you think the population of Equestria is of Ponyville, of Canterlot? Not really looking for something specific, just a generalization. I have seen a brilliant study someone did about the population of Ponyville, where they calculated all these factors and tried to suggest uh, what the population density actually is. So I'll put a link to that in the description if I can find it again. Um, as for that, it's, uh, beyond that, it's, there's just no possible way to speculate. We don't know how big each of the cities is. We don't know exactly, um, you know, anything. So, yeah, I'm not going to try to make too many spe speculations about it. Um, Tyler Schlarm asks, Do you hope for Discord to become a major character in Season 4? Because of your Keep Calm and Flutter On review, do you want him to die off when the season starts? Uh, I'd like it if he made an appearance. Why would I want him to die? That would just be weird. It wouldn't do anyone any good. So, yeah, no. Uh, TBB asks, Is Dusty Cat really the manliest brony in the world, in your opinion? I don't know. Maybe? Manliness is pretty hard to define. We kind of just did a whole podcast about that and the crepuscular bronies, although we did not reach any kind of conclusions in that. Uh, but manliness really seems more like a gut reaction to something. And in his case, it's the mustache. So, yeah, maybe... Maybe facial hair makes you manly. Zoe Morgan asks, So in the Sonic Rainboom episode, there are those three stallion pegasi who bully Rainbow Dash, and each of them has an athletic-ish cutie mark, but they either A, work in the weather factory, where nothing pertains to their supposed destinies, or B, play sports in the sky, which maybe they do, but it seems weird. Are all of the sports held in the cloud Cloudiceum? Anyways, maybe in one of your analysis videos you can mention how ponies sometimes ha have jobs or play roles that have nothing to do with what they've discovered about themselves. Yeah, I found out about those guys after um, doing that Destiny video. Like, sometime later, somebody pointed it out to me, and I was like, Huh, that is interesting. So, you know, I'm starting to think I'm going to end up doing a lot of videos about Destiny because people keep asking me about it, so I will probably bring that up uh, in one of those videos. J Fluffy asks, Do you believe that the changelings and their motives are genuinely evil or more on the morally ambiguous side? Uh, definitely morally ambiguous, which I think is the case with everyone. No one in the show is purely evil, although Sombra is kind of like the Hitler of the Ponyverse, but, uh, you know, calling someone like Discord evil... Well, from his perspective, he wouldn't say so. So, you know, it's really something that you have to define on, on your own basis. And in the case of the Changelings, the, the, the comics are actually exploring the moral ambig... They, the comics really have expanded on the Changelings. If you can get your hands on the IDW comics, those are great. Uh, you can buy them online on the site Comixology if you can't actually go out to get them. For, you can get them like $2 an issue, so definitely check that out. Or, you know, find it another way. This is a username 2004 asks, 
any ideas how to write a fanfic that doesn't suck? Uh, yeah, step one, be a good writer. Step two, have a good idea, and that's about it. Uh, Anonymous, what is your opinion of Sethisto? Well, I don't know the guy. I've never seen the guy. Uh, I haven't... I don't really know what he's like, so I have no opinion about him personally. But the next question is, are you okay with the fact that Sethisto has become more or less a spokesperson of the brony community? What is your opinion over the fact that there's no major brony website that rivals Equestria Daily? I think it sucks, because Equestria Daily is a blog. It is just a couple of guys sharing the stuff that they like, which means that anything that they don't like or that they don't care about is really going to get overlooked. So it would be, you know, I don't necessarily... Because if, if we had something that was just constantly putting out everything everyone does, you'd end up with a whole lot of, of crap. But that's kind of what something like Reddit exists for. It's a filter where that's why the, the My Little Pony board is cool because anything can go on, can go in there. And then depending on what everyone likes is what reaches the front page. So uh, everyone gets to see it. But even our My Little Pony is pretty biased because they mostly will upvote uh, s pictures and comics because it's quick and easy. Um, so... It would be nice if we had another EQD, where it was someone who liked slightly different stuff, posting stuff. Or, I don't know, it's just, I just wish that they they had broader a broader scope, you know, because they're the people who most most fans are, are, uh, are seeing, and, you know, I've missed... Uh, when I first got into the fandom, I was mostly following Equestria Daily, and then I realized quickly that I was missing out on a lot of stuff because of that, you know, and I think everyone will miss out. You'll miss out on me if you only follow Equestria Daily. They've only shared a couple of my videos, only in nightly roundups, so uh, maybe I'm just bitter. Especially because I, I kept sending them without Luna last year and they never took it. <laughs> which made me cry. I think I sent them the new without Luna and they still haven't posted that either. So, yeah, fuck those guys. Anyway, <laughs> Anonymous asks, Do you believe that bronies are annoying at times by constantly pointing themselves out? Um, I think it's fine to be proud that you're a brony and to share that you're a brony. But I also think that social awareness is a good thing. You know, uh, having a brony avatar on YouTube, fine, right? You leave a comment in somebody's video, you've got a brony avatar. If somebody's going to pick a fight with you, then they're the douchebag, right? But if you go into a thread somewhere and you just start, like, ranting about how haters suck and you start crying about stuff, it's just not cool. You know, it, only talk about things that are relevant to the discussion. You know, if you're in a video that has nothing to do with ponies and you're talking about haters and stuff, it's like, this isn't the place. Um, if you're out in the, you know, if, if you're out on the town and you're wearing a brony shirt, that's cool. If you introduce yourself to someone and you say, yeah, I'm a brony, that's like, fine. But if you start telling people like, like if somebody's like, oh, I'm not interested in My Little Pony and you go, oh, but you should be. Let me tell you a thousand million reasons why. It's like, dude, maybe just leave the guy alone. You know, he's eating his sandwich. Let the guy eat his fucking sandwich without having to think about marshmallow ponies the whole time. You know, he's going to get a stomach ache. With all that, um, sugariness. T-Dog asks, most attractive voice actress in your opinion? Well, I wouldn't say I'm particularly attracted to anyone, but let's just say when I look at Tara Strong and my eyes go to a certain place, uh, you know, I'm not really attracted to her, but I can appreciate that she is attractive. Uh, Jacob asks, will you be applying for a position in Brony Curious's recovery project? I thought about it, but the thing is, the only male role so far to audition for is the narrator, and I don't want to do that because I'll have to be doing it forever, and I'm really not reliable. It's really more about him than me, where I don't want to say I'm going to be a part of this project and then potentially flake out later. So uh, I'd like to do one of the minor characters. He's actually told me some stuff that's going to happen in the later chapters, so I know that there's going to be more, like one-off male characters and I'm definitely interested both because I like his comic I like him and I like to do voice acting so I, I do want to play a character at some point uh, the animation on the characters in the show has improved so much and the expressive the expressions have become more varied as time goes on there are now certain extreme expressions that are exclusive to certain characters have you ever thought about adding some of these extreme expressions to your own pony in your videos well that's entirely up to Mizu Takashima if she wants to do that um if, you know, she just kind of sends me uh, facial expressions every once in a while when she's worked on them. Um, I know she doesn't have time to do, like, a whole ton, but uh, I just kind of, she sends them to me, and I go, these are awesome, I'm going to use these, you know. So if she sends me extreme facial expressions, I will find a use for them, but uh, that is entirely up to her. Um, so far, the only th time I've ever asked her specifically for an expression is for a, a, 
an image that I'm going to use in an upcoming video on Digibrony After Dark, which will be a surprise. Anonymous asks, do you like Soren? Sure, he seems like a cool bro. Uh, have you seen Pony in a Box? Yes, and I find it completely annoying. Uh, do you think the female bronies or Pegasisters are underspoken for? Yeah, I'd like to see more female bronies be more outspoken. I'd like to see some of them doing what I do because, you know, um, I've seen a lot of female pony artists and uh, animators and stuff, but I haven't seen anyone who's like just talking about the show who's a girl, so I'd like to see more of that. Someone who's in my position who's female just because it would be fun. Um, or even doing something like what Saber and AC Race Best do, where they just make hilarious videos. Uh, how old do you think you have to be to like the show the way bronies do? Zero years old. David Dorham asks, Hi Digi, a bit of a personal question. Did you ever receive any crap from people for chasing a career in writing and the arts? I know, you know what I mean, the typical get a job hippie bullshit. Yeah, no one has a lot of faith in me, and... That's, I mean, my dad does, and that's why he's let me leave my job to do this, because, you know, he could have just been like, oh, you're not, you know, you have to, you have to pay me rent, because, you know, I'm obviously over 18 and living in his house, but, uh, you know, he has a lot of faith in the idea that I might succeed, he's always thought I was a great writer, um, he's always thought I was a better writer than I have ever been, but, uh, yeah, uh, it's hard because of the fact that I am pretty unreliable, um, Last, let's go just go into a little history right now. In 2011, I left school because I, I was only going to school so I wouldn't have to get a job. My dad told me I had to do one or the other uh, after I graduated high school. But in 2011, I left school because I was just sick of it. And I was going to go, um, my dad sent me to the Philippines for a month to stay with my friend and mentor who I met online. And that was totally cool. But the whole idea was that it was supposed to jog me into wanting to do something, right? I was supposed to, like, get inspired, maybe either start taking my writing more seriously or get a job. And I did neither. And I pretty much sat around for the next year and kept barely working on projects. You know, I, I was obviously doing something the whole time, but I didn't launch any projects. Nothing on the scale of what I'm doing now. So I did eventually end up getting a job just because it was like, I can't keep laying around the house and I really need to get inspired. And so before I got the job, I was, I had started making videos. I made a few video game analysis videos on my old channel, which are called Adventure Action RPG. And those were good, but they were, you know, low production quality because I didn't have the equipment to do it right. And I didn't feel like I was ever going to really take off and be successful if I didn't have that level of quality where people would come to my videos and be like, this is professional, you know. So uh, I got a job. I bought all the equipment so I could do it right. Um, and I really thought I'd take off with this Mass Effect documentary thing I was going to do, which I still intend to do. But uh, I'm kind of pony right now. So, yeah, I don't deserve a lot of faith. And I probably have gotten more than I deserve. But um, but I think I'm going to succeed. And I've always thought I was going to succeed. I've always been really confident in myself. So, yeah, that. Uh, Vaster asks, You seem to know a lot about MLP, and your feed is filled with videos that I haven't even seen. Where and how do you find them? I seek them out. Um, you know, obviously Equestria Daily was a great place for me to start. I went through the entire media tab on Equestria Daily back in the day and just watched everything. So I'm really well acquainted with a lot of the bronies and uh, musicians and stuff. And I've kept up to date with them, um, the ones I like. Uh, I'm subscribed to a lot of people. Um, I hang out, you know, occasionally I hang out in streams and stuff. So it'll be like, when a new, every time a new episode comes out, there's always a 20, or like a, uh, a stream that starts the night before where people will marathon the entire show leading up to the new episode and then they'll, they'll stream the episode in that stream. I hang out in those sometimes and I see a lot of videos there. Um, I follow a lot of Pony Tumblers. I follow, obviously, Reddit, which I've said a few times is the biggest way that I get stuff. And I explore related videos on YouTube sometimes. All of those, I think that's the main way people find my videos, according to YouTube's analytics. So, yeah, just exploration. And apparently, I'm done with section one. 
That is all of the questions about either MLP or my channel that I answered in this Google document. Um, I think I probably got more questions after I stopped answering them, and then I finally closed the comment box. But if I did not answer your question, you may ask it in the description. But make sure it's about MLP or my channel. If it's a personal question or about something that's not MLP, I will be answering it in section two. Or if it's an adult question, like something to do with uh, anything not safe for work, that will be in section three. But uh, if you have a question that's legitimately about the show that I have not answered, you can ask it in the comments, and I will probably answer Answer it. So, yay! Annotations all over the screen. That was from Sonic, isn't it? And here I was saying I don't like Sonic. I still don't like Sonic, but it's part of my childhood. You know, I grew up. I grew up with Sonic. I grew up with Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. I'm just like all of you. I'm just like everyone else. <laughs>